What's up everybody, back at it again with another Magnum Quest video. And in this one, it's gonna be the sixth Hero Spotlight video. I'm gonna be covering the less than scary vampire many thought we would be getting. Lycidas, uh, Lycidas, Lycidas. I'm sure one of those are right. Let's get it. Before we do this, a new code was released earlier this morning. Um, in case you weren't aware, let's get this redeemed. So the code is Thanksgiving. I'll put it up on the screen right here. And it expires January 31st, 2022. So you've got a lot of time to put that in. Um, you're going to be getting 1,000 Dragon Shards, 50 Turkey Pies, and 4 times 6 hour worth of um, idle rewards. Um, I didn't bother covering the Thanksgiving event. I wouldn't even really call it an event. Um, as you simply just get turkey pies every hour through your idle chest that give random rewards uh, when you open them up. You can get gold, gold dice, dragon shards. There's a bunch of stuff you can get in them. Um, I thought there was going to be like an event shop to exchange for um, or maybe even buy event currency. Basically, I wanted to swipe the card for more star map resources, but I guess we're going to get that in December. Um, I think that's when there's going to be a lot of good stuff, or at least I hope so. Um, when Dracula Man was introduced into the game, um, it had a big impact on the meta. Um, and when I say big impact, I mean for the most part he just replaced Fair. Um, but it did open up for other opportunities for hero pairing, which I'm going to get into in the setups portion of the video. Jumping into the gear set options, personally for me, I find him to be rather squishy. When they first released his skill overview, it looked like he would be more heavily focused on the tanking aspect. Um, but then they kind of switched this up in, on the final release and then they lowered his survivability, but then they bumped up his damage. And damage is how I personally build him. Um, the set I go with is the Fury set. This set gives that two set pieces, you're going to gain 30 hit. Um, three set pieces, you're going to gain minus physical damage taken. At four set pieces, you're going to gain 20% crit. The reason why I go with this one is because it has hit. Um, it further allows him to land his ultimate, Blood Altar. Um, it surprisingly is a hard hitting skill. Um, I know a lot don't see Dracula as a damage dealer, but when you build him for damage, his numbers aren't that bad. Um, the other set you could utilize if you don't want to go down that all damage path would be the Courage set. Uh, this set gives that two set pieces, you're going to gain 6% attack. Three set pieces, you're going to gain 20% death. And at four set pieces, you're going to gain 15% HP. Um, you still get a tiny bit of attack there, which um, can add to his damage, but it's mostly for those tank stats of death and HP. Um, like I said, I do find him to be rather squishy. So if you want to utilize him strictly for the teleport blood contract, which helps the teleported hero stay alive longer since it does share damage between the two. Um, this is the set for you. And now moving down to rune options. So due to the fact I wouldn't recommend him on bosses, I mean I actually did use him on Wind and Puppet Boss for the 75% damage buff on my other accounts. His teleport skill ruins a lot of the hero positioning in terms of the typical support hero radius uh, with their ultimates like Sinia and Harry. So because I don't use him on bosses, um, I go with the green energy rune. This allows him to gain energy quicker, getting more ultimates off, and once you get that level 3, his ultimate also silences. Stats to be looking for on the rune, this is going to vary depending on if you're running him for damage or for tanking. Um, for damage, you're going to want your typical crit and crit damage, because his ultimate is where the chunk of his damage comes from. Um, attack ER is a solid option. I wouldn't go too crazy on this stat, maybe just one slot. P damage ink, which increases physical damage also works so you've got a couple of options here for stat variations um as we know rune stat rolling in this game is uh it's not fun it can be fun but very very rarely is it ever fun um if you choose him for tanking then i would focus more on survivability stats um so like dodge minus damage taken whether that's physical or magical um hit er would be really nice as when he teleports your frontline hero uh to the enemy team he's going to be targeted depending on the situation allowing him to gain more energy when being hit, staying alive to keep that blood contract up, and then building up to his ultimate faster could very well be the deciding factor whether you win the battle or you need to retry hundreds of times. Uh, hundreds, I'm not kidding. I think before the nerf on 27.5, I think it was, I probably was around the 1000 retry mark for sure. So yeah, some stages do have a lot of RNG factor and you will need to retry unless you're just crazy over leveled and then it doesn't really matter. Um, as for the rare stat rune, Haste or Steel, in my opinion, I wouldn't use this on a personalized rune just because due to the lack of resources right now regarding runes. So for example, you went with crit and crit damage and then P damage ink, um, and then threw the haste on that one. That means this rune won't be great on an Intel DPS hero. I always try to have that in the back of my mind, making general runes that can be used either for all DPSers 
Um, all tanks are all the supports. If you got a crap load of rune materials, I wish I was you, so maybe share a little, otherwise... But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill I won't take it that far. Liam Neeson is more intense than I am, but maybe throw me a crit damage stat. That's all I ask. I just need a couple. Now let's dive into his star map. Uh, before going into the first tier of selectable options, the first active allows him to gain attack. Um, that's what I want. That's what I build him for. Um, in the bronze tier, it's going to be the typical star map sequence when dealing with damage dealers. So attack here. Then depending on your stats, crit chance or crit damage. If you're just starting out, I've said this before, and you have limited runes, you're probably going to want to go with crit chance. Um, and then I went with attack here, crit chance or crit damage, depending on your stats. Um, if you're going the tanking way, I haven't really found if death or HP is better. The way I see it is you're going to get basically one shot anyways at late game. So death seems kind of pointless. I would probably go with HP, but I, I don't know. I really just don't know. I would suggest maybe even doing a hybrid build between HP and death, which is what I usually do. For the most part though, um, I usually tend to just run full attack on my heroes because their skill values are typically based off their own attack. Um, now for his active skill, um, I think you have two options here depending on how you're building him. Number one, if you're going to go damage, you have the domino effect, uh, which is what I went with. It allows you to increase your damage for attacking multiple targets. It's great. Perfect. I mean, his ultimate targets a group of enemies. Bam, attack increased. Really good skill here. And then for number two, if you're going tank, um, I think you could go with Shield of Blessing as it increases the effectiveness of all healing skills. Um, so, but here's my question because I haven't had much time lately for in-depth testing. Has any of my viewers or subs, draft squad, party members taken this active skill and tested this? I will ask the devs, but it's hit or miss when they get back to me. Um, how Dracula works is he siphons HP by the amount equal to a percentage of his attack. So does Shield of Blessing then somehow factor in 25% to that amount to boost it? Um, I'm not really sure here, but it could be a solid option if you're going the tanking path for more survivability. So comment down below if you've tested this skill out or if you know how it works. I'm actually quite curious. So those are the two options you have to choose from depending on your playstyle. Now moving over to the silver tier, um, it's very similar to the bronze tier. Attack here. Here I went with dodge. I just find it's a better overall stat. Um, attack here, then crit or crit damage depending on your hero's stats like I mentioned previously. Uh, then attack. If you're going the tank way, then the tank stats would be your option. As for the third active skill, Blessing of Power, increased survivability, can't complain with that. Um, and then finally, we're going to make our way into the gold tier. Here I went with dodge, attack, haste, then crit or crit damage depending on your hero stats. Then of course, if you went tanky, you're going to go with the tank stats. So once again, I think you have two options here based off your Dracula's playstyle. For mine, since I go damage all the way, I'm going to be going with Show of Strength. Um, with a green energy rune, uh, maybe some attack ER, you should be able to get multiple ultimates off, so keeping this damage buff up shouldn't be an issue. It lasts for 15 seconds and increases damage by 15%. So I'm pretty confident in saying this is going to have a 100% uptime, but of course there could be some factors that come into play here, such as if you're getting CC. The other option would be throw therapy. I think I'm saying that right. It's up and down in terms of how long the battle duration ends up being. Some fights you win in 15 seconds, some 1 minute, some 5 seconds, some you don't win. And because you can only trigger one of these random buffs, another reason why I'm a bit iffy on this skill, accuracy, attack, defense, dodge, Dracula already has a lot of randomness with his skill kit. Adding this might just end up frustrating me even more. Um, plus it looks like only two of his skills activate a healing skill, one being his ultimate skill and then the other being his heart extraction skill. Um, they both have Siphon HP, so depending on how many variables, like if he gets CC'd, uh, meaning he gets immobilized, he can't attack, so he drops one of those buffs. I don't know, it just seems very questionable to me. Um, and then Hunter's Delight. This sounds interesting, I just got confused about the wording. When an enemy falls, two random skills of the heroes instantly cool down. So is this Dracula's? Um, is this the hero who defeated the enemy? Is the enemy somehow getting his skills cooled down even though he's defeated? And what exactly is cooldown? Wouldn't you want the skills to come off cooldown so you can use them right away? To me, cooldown sounds like it just puts two random skills on cooldown, meaning you have to now wait until they become available again. So it's just a little bit weird here in terms of the wording. I'm going to send a message to the devs and see the response I get back, because early to mid game, uh, this might be pretty neat. Late game, I find the enemies take much longer to drop, so I'd still go with Show of Strength or a Damage Dracula. All right, so now let's get into the popular setups. 
Um, as mentioned, I wouldn't recommend him on bosses, so that leaves me with PvP and PvE non-related boss content setups. Uh, let's go with the PvE first. So typically my setup would look something like this. Dracula cannot teleport himself to the enemy team, so when you place him in the front row, the other frontliner hero of yours will be teleported into the enemy team like this. Um, as you can see in this example, Kados gets thrown into the enemy. If I were to place Dracula in the back line, then let's say like maybe Phi and Kados in the front, there's a 50-50 chance here one of them will be teleported. You are trying to minimize the RNG, the randomness, the best you can, so that is why I would suggest placing him in the front. You can do tricks like uh, in this example to bypass Ferris pull at the beginning by placing the soon to be teleported hero, uh, which would be Kados in this example, opposite of him so when he gets thrown into the enemy, Fair has to change his skill direction, thus having your team avoid his pull. This also works for Gilla or simply any hero you want to stay away from your team. Uh, your backline three heroes are up to you. Many will utilize either what you see here, or maybe instead of Sir, you're going to use Oshishi. I, I said that right. You, I've been saying Oshishi, but then again, I said Lone instead of Ion. But yeah, so it's Osh... Oh, that's a hard word. So it's Oshishi for more CC crowd control. Uh, moving over to PvP. Now, I'm no expert here. In fact, I'm pretty useless in PvP. But from what I've seen in the Battlefield of Gods, um, a solid setup you're going to want to run with him would be like... Now I'm no expert, in fact I'm pretty useless in PvP, but from what I've seen in Battlefield of the Gods, a solid setup you'll want to run with him would be like a, what you saw in my chapter adventure team. Uh, the reason for this is because Kato's silence is busted, silencing the enemy team over and over, on top of your Dracula also doing silence, allowing your Sir in this case free reign to do damage. Uh, you can run your setup however you please, but the same tactics apply from PvE, meaning if the enemy has a Fair or maybe an Ares, Use your teleported hero opposite to keep them away from your heroes. Now moving over to his skills, Heart Extraction. Uh, he siphons HP and inflicts the weakened effect, which lowers their damage output. I believe this is random, but the neat thing here is that the siphon HP is transferred to the blood contract hero, and if that hero who was initially the contract dies, um, he heals the lowest HP and makes them the new blood contract. Overall, it's a nice skill to synergize with that teleported hero, which in my examples for this setups would be Kato's. Um, his next skill, House of Sanguine. A percentage amount of the damage Dracula deals is converted to HP, and his physical damage intake is reduced. This also applies to the Blood Contract hero. Once again, this is a great skill for survivability, and also why I chose to go with attack, as more damage means more HP conversion. Um, Phantom of the Bat. This is an awesome teleport skill that made this hero skyrocket into the meta, as it also allows for many possibilities that I mentioned earlier. Uh, Blood Contract Hero and Dracula share damage taken, and the enemies surrounding the teleported hero have their accuracy lowered, so once again this improves survivability. It may not always be for his benefit, but he's not going to be your main DPS carry anyways, it's most likely going to be your Ares depending on the stage of the game you're in. Um, also, he teleports a random enemy to that enemy dense area where your hero was thrown, so there's just a crap load of teleporting going on right here. Um, and then finally for his ultimate blood altar, he drops a blood altar in the most enemy dense area which will most likely be where your front row hero got teleported. It does AoE damage meaning area damage, it siphons their HP, and then that HP is stored as energy which then gets released dealing damage to an amount equaling all of that siphoned HP. Um, eventually on level 3 this skill also um, silences them which I mentioned. This can do damage. Um, like on my third account where I go Wind and DPS, I have my Wind and 6 star and I have my Dracula 6 star. He has completed his bronze tier star map. My Dracula puts up decent numbers. Um, sure it won't be Ares numbers, Wind and numbers, Sir numbers, but it works. I mean I think I can get him to 10 to 15 mil on my main account on stages. Obviously this depends if he survives the whole fight. I'm just saying try him out with damage and see how it goes. Regardless, he's still a top solid strength hero um, for a star map investment. Where does Dracula rank in terms of ascension and importance priority for the Shadow Faction? Uh, so for me in terms of ascension, Durla will always be number one. Durla is the damage dealer for the Shadow Faction. Without her in the Faction Dungeon, you're going to have a bad time. Because of this, Dracula for me is number two. Uh, this also depends on priority. Like my third account, like I've mentioned with Winden, I got him to six stars first before Durla, so I could progress in the chapter adventure much easier. 
But because I did this, now I'm slow on the faction dungeon because my Duralo is only gold three or gold four. I can't remember. Uh, but I'm just waiting on hero food. Um, as for importance priority, because there is a difference between the two, a hero can have low ascension priority but high importance. Typically you would see this with supports like Sinia um, or a tank like Rickers. Um, I would still place him number two because Durla is Shadow Faction DPS. So although his importance value is really good with his skill kit, without Durla or a low ascended Durla, the other Shadow heroes won't be able to carry you. Or at least not that far. They may do the job earlier on in the faction dungeon, but eventually you're going to hit a point where it just doesn't work anymore. But just remember, many players got to the top floors in the 190s without Dracula. He just sped up that progress by a crap ton. Dracula for me averages out to be an S plus tier hero. He has a unique skill kit, changed up the meta, and allowed for even faster progression. I would even go as far as saying it shaved off a couple months. Um, he's got a bit of everything. He's got damage, tank, support... Um, used almost everywhere in the game, minus bosses, and he was among some of the new heroes who actually got used a lot, so that's a positive. And finally, looking into his story, Dracula rarely appears in the sun. Uh, typical vampire stuff because he's going to burn, uh, unless you're watching Twilight and then they sparkle. It's like diamonds. I don't really want to get into that one. It says here that his home would welcome a new lord, Every so often, since he has immortality, he would leave and come back, welcome a son of Dracula, grandson of Dracula. Basically, he's just trying to cover the fact that he's immortal. He met his wife, Hilda, but his thirst for blood caused a divorce. Uh, it seems weird reading this with a vampire getting married and then divorced. But anyways, that caused her to resent him um, and form the Hunter's League. Organization to exterminate monsters. Very familiar territory here with a lot of movies. She passed away, and then it says he had no interest in the Black Force, which seems to be in all the heroes' stories. But if this force did threaten the Hunter's League, then he would protect it. I appreciate this Dracula because that is the only part of the game that allows me to even remotely gain star map, barrel, gold, etc. resources in a cost-efficient way. I think for a skin idea, would to make him the dark version of Dracula. Uh, right now he's looking more elegant, and I know that wasn't what many players wanted, so something with a darker theme uh, many suggested like Vlad the Impaler, um, but please get rid of these gloves and pants, um, or I think those are pants maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just a one piece. Either way, the elf we could use a different look. I do have an ongoing giveaway right now. Um, it ends tomorrow, Friday at the end of the day. Three winners, 1800 Dragon Shards each. I was able to get an increase by quite a bit from the previous. It will be clickable at the end of this video. I appreciate all the comments regarding opinions on the state of the game, since I will have that future of MQ video coming out next week. As always, thanks for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for future videos, and stay tuned for the next one.